So how are you on cash? How's your financial life? Are you one of those people who thinks that with a little bit more money, your life would be totally different and you could, I don't know, finally be happy? Have you ever been unemployed? Have you ever been so short on money that you were willing to do almost anything? And what would you be willing to do? What is the limit? This is what we're going to be talking about today. So welcome to Light Screening, the channel for movie lovers more than movie savvies. My name is Gisela Cruz and we are going to be talking about a South Korean movie called Parasite. So Parasite is about this, uh, this young boy who finds a, a tutoring job with a girl from a rich family and his own family is unemployed. So he kind of finds a way to get them all jobs. That doesn't seem so bad, does it? So this movie has been nominated for six Oscars, three Golden Globes, four BAFTAs. It's won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. So it comes highly recommended. It's one of the surprises of the year. This is by director Bong, Jun, Bong Joon-ho. <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. Bong Joon-ho. I haven't seen anything by this director, but... From what I could gather, he does these disconcerting films, and this is certainly one of them. So what is this about? I'm going to be reading to you the quotes uh, from some, uh, some critics because I couldn't have said it better. So, for instance, John Bleedsdale from Cineview, he says that Parasite is a masterful dissection of social inequ inequality and the psychology of money. And Jonathan Romney from Screen Daily, he says that uh, Parasite is a malign delight from start to finish with a Machiavellian sense of mischief and a cinematic brio that shows Bong reveling in his Hitchcockian control of somewhat Bunuelian material. So if you know what this means, you will know what to expect when getting into that dark room because I didn't and I was totally surprised by this movie. This is disconcerting. Um, it's a social satire. It's a suspense drama. It's a um, class conscious satire of these polarized times. I'm still quoting some, some reviews I've seen. Um, this is certainly all that. It's about what? It's about the haves and the have-nots. So it goes so deep into the haves and the have-nots and, and the, the little uh, traits and the little problems and the little um, um, behaviors and uh, the all that comes with it whether with money uh, whether with money or without money what we see what we don't what we think what we feel and it's so raw and so intense and so uh, so um open and so honest that it is indeed uh, disconcerting. This is, I'm not going to be talking much about the performances or the sets. I found the performances, the sets, the writing, I found it very, very good. Very good. I mean, the, the, the sets, I'm, I'm not going to get much into it, but the, the there is this house of the rich family that was uh, designed and built from scratch. So, and it's it's breathtaking. Um, in the movie, it's supposed to be to be designed by an architect, and it certainly is a fabulous set. But anyway, the the performances it's they've been they've been praised. Uh, it certainly is absolutely competent. Let's say it's it's absolutely. You are not. Uh, thinking about any of the technical issues when you are watching this movie and that is the best compliment I can make um, but it's divided the writing is pretty pretty damn brilliant uh, it's divided in two parts uh, the second half, uh, the director didn't use any of the footage from the second half in any promotional material or any trailer or anything at all because he wants to keep it a secret. He asks the audience to keep the second half a secret and it's understandably so because uh, what is this about? The first half 
we get to know the have-nots and they are not that ethical, okay? They are willing to go to some lengths to get what they want and um, I was a little bit disappointed by it. I was like, okay, so fine. So uh, don't tell me that the witch people are going to be portrayed as saints. Well, oh, none of the kind. In fact, you may have some um, reservations, let's say, like some, some, you may have, uh, you may be a little, um, not trusting that family, that have not family uh, so much. But then in the second half, you kind of see that they don't have that much choice. I mean, obviously, they always have choices, but but you kind of get into their side and you go, okay, if I had lived my whole life like that and with that and feeling that, maybe I could get to that. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, please go watch it and you will. So, um, what else can I say about this? Oh, um, a curiosity that I've also read. Um, the director apparently, and from his research, he gave uh, the profession of tutor to this, this kid because it's the statistically one of the few possibilities, the few professions that kind of makes... Uh, a rich family and such a poor family to uh, have their paths crossed in South Korea. So that is even more shocking, okay? Apparently, statistically, it's very hard for these kinds of family to have their paths crossing. Uh, and uh, this profession, this job, was the few things and the few believable things that that kid could do to actually get into that rich house. So that is even more shocking. So... Go watch this. It's not an easy film to watch. I, I absolutely recommend it. I wouldn't be shocked if it won a few Oscars. I, I wouldn't even be shocked if, if it won Best Movie. I, I don't think it's... The, I'm not sure it's the Best Movie of the Year. It's certainly the most surprising, maybe. So I wouldn't be shocked if it, if it won the Best Movie. I wouldn't be shocked if it won the Best Foreign Language Movie. Um... It is disconcerting. It is a, a fresh take. It does have some artistic aspects. It, it has the scene, and I'm not. I'm trying not to give it away because um, it is in the second half. There is this scene um, in the house of the poor family where things sort of implode. Let's just say it like that. Things short, sort of kind of uh, fall apart. Let's just say it like that. Um, it is so artistically shot you know it, it it has such a touch of art this is stupid because movies are art but uh it, it has such a meaningful it's it's it, it there are some scenes that are recorded that are um shown in such a blunt and such an honest and such a with such there are some gestures and some features and some uh, things that happen and that are shown that give you such a full picture of the of what those people are feeling and there is another scene and also in the second half and i'm i'm trying not to give too much away but Let's just say, have you ever felt that you got a call from your job or whatever and your life was completely destroyed and you your, your life had just imploded and you just had to put on the mask and go to work, you know? And people demand from you and they have no idea what's going on behind, uh, you know, beh behind the curtain, let's say. And you just put on the mask and you go to work and people demand from you. It's such a cruel thing to watch. It's such a cruel thing to have happen that maybe we've all been through it. You know, I certainly have. Um to uh, i certainly have not so, not so long ago my my whole life my my love was destroyed and and uh and i was working and i was being demanded from and um that is such a cruel such a raw such a powerful image uh that i absolutely recommend this movie because th these details and this story it's worth watching and worth discussing it's there's i I almost feel ashamed because there is so much more to say even about the theme, but I'll leave it to you.
because it is disconcerting and I do recommend it and please go to the movies. I'm going to recommend another thing, a blast from the past. Let's just go to the blast from the past. I had never seen this movie before. I saw it on television this week. Um, I'm not even quite sure and this is I should I should be sure when I recommend something but I, I'm not. Um, it is a movie called, I, I'm not sure why it touched me, but it did. And also because it's a couple of lives destroyed and uh, you do the best you can and you live a little moment and a little uh, summer uh, and you live it and you go for it and you come alive and then you just slide into nothingness again. This is a movie like that. It's uh, called Redemption. It's from 2013. Uh, the director is Stephen Knight and the main, the main character is performed by uh, Jason Statham. Uh, it, 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 it certainly it, it, it impacted me uh, because of that. Because, because because it's two lives coming alive when they weren't and sliding back into what they know. And that is certainly impactful. Um, we all wish for a happy ending. And in this case and in this movie, the happiest thing that happened was just that little frame of time and that was enough. And that is kind of artistic and kind of poetic. Um, the movie is not, it's, it's very... It's, it's a, if you will, an action movie. I'm, I, it's not even an action movie, it's a drama. Uh, it's based on London in the area of Covent Garden. It's about this, this homeless guy who was in special forces and he's kind of, he uh, deserted and he's crazy and he's a drunk and he's a drug addict, but then he cleans himself up. He takes another person's identity for a summer and he does what he has, what he thinks he has to do, falls in love, lives it. I'm not sure if it's in love or if it's in his ability to fall in love, but still, but uh, it, it, it's an interesting movie to watch as well. I don't even exactly know why, except from what I've just said. So you tell me if you've ever seen it, if, if you, and what you think about it. Thank you for being on that other side. It's not, you're not many, but you are great and you're always there. And uh, thank you for your support. And if you can, please comment and please share and please like and please subscribe. And um, maybe I'll keep doing it. Bye-bye. Go to the movies. Thank you.